SBA case files which we have started last month. This is an innovative case based discussion by RSSDI, supported by RSSDI case discussions group and CME India group. Uh, I and Dr. N K Singh, we both are coordinator for this group. And today we are devoting our episode, which is related to diabetes in young based cases, to Professor V S Ajgaon Kasar. I will request Nirav to run the slides. He has done a lot of work. He was a physician and he was also an artist. In his eighth decade, he has done PhD in Sanskrit. And he has devoted his life to public awareness, particularly type one diabetes children, adolescents. He was associated with JDM from his young age, and he has done a lot of work in the field of diabetes in India. So, with that uh, short obituary to Dr. V. S. Ajgaonkar, sir, and in his memory, we are conducting the second case file, which is related to diabetes in India. So, I will invite. Panelists, sir, just to people add, people. just to add, and just to tell everybody because all of them are RSSD member. Doctor yes. S. Asghavkar, his father was a honorary president of International Diabetic Federation. His younger brother, why V. S. Asghavkar had become very much interested in type one because S. Asghavkar, younger brother, was type one diabetes, and that's how the interest for treating diabetes. For his father, and then he became as an honorary president of International Diabetic Federation. And V. S. Asghavkar, he has finished his M. D. and he started treating diabetes. And his particular interest for type one was because of his uncle who died in his young age as a type one diabetes. With this, now please continue. Thank you, thank you, Bansi. So I will uh, invite panelists, expert panelists, for this case-based discussion. Anirav, can you run the uh, slide, CV slides? So I think Dr. S. R. Arvind is not there. He is uh, currently president of Diabetes India and is past president of RSSDI and is director of Diacon Hospital Bangalore. So probably he will join in a short while. I will also invite Dr. Bansi Sabu. You all know him. He is past president of RSSDI, current secretary of Diabetes India, and is chair elect ID of Southeast Asia and is passionate about. Management of type one diabetes is taking lot of uh, initiatives to improve care of people living with diabetes in our country and across the globe. Next, please. I also like to invite Dr. Anju Virwani, Madam. Uh, she is uh, MD Pediatrics and she has done DNB endocrinology, so she is one of the pioneer pediatric endocrinologists from the capital city of our country she is currently director of pediatric endocrinology at max smart super specialty hospital at delhi and she is founder president of indian society of pediatric and adults and endocrinology and she is also involved with ispat thank you madam for accepting our invitation and being part of this expert panelist and last but not least i like to invite dr alok kanungo He is managing director and chief consultant diabetologist at Kids Multi Specialty Hospital, Bhuvneshwar, Odisha. He has done PhD from Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, and is principal investigator for type one diabetes genetic studies in India NIH project. So, with that short introduction of expert panelists, now I will hand over to Dr. N K Singh to introduce our case presenter and invite him to present his case, Professor Anil. Uh, welcome to you all, all our expert faculty, our EC members. Uh, I think uh, our chairman, president, and secretary will join later on, and uh, all the audience and our delegates. Uh, great pleasure uh, inviting Dr. R. Anil Kumar, HMD, FRCP, uh, FICP, and WHO Fellowship in Diabetology. He is the associate professor. An HOD diabetes and endocrinology at the Karnataka Institute of Endocrinology at Bangalore, and he is also the past president of Karnataka RSSDI. Uh, with this short introduction, uh, welcome Dr. R. N. Kumar. Uh, he will present two cases. First, we will discuss the first case, and later on, after discussion, the second case. That will be very short case. So <laughs> now the stage is yours. Please okay. share the Thank screen. You, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. N. K. Singh, sir. So. Uh, i should be very thankful to you for your help and uh, invite inviting for this program i'll share my screen
Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. So actually, I will present two cases. Uh, both cases are diabetes in Eng. And of course, in this era of precision medicine, I think these both cases are quite important in our regular uh, diabetes practice. This is the first case. Uh, a male boy aged about 15 years and uh, it was a newly diagnosed diabetes. His father was diabetic. His weight was 44 kgs, height 170 centimeters. His BMI was 15.22, waist circumference 72 centimeters, BP 100 by 70 millimeters mercury. Of course, his uh, general physical examination, he was uh, quite poorly built and nourished and systemic examination was normal. And on investigations, his hemoglobin was 15.6 grams per deciliter, total count 7,680 per cubic millimeter, and his differential count neutrophils 55%, lymphocytes 35%, eosinophils 3%, monocytes 5.7 and basophils 0.3%. His ESR was 12 millimeters per hour, Platelet count 4,31,000 per cubic millimeter and his urine glucose was uh, uh, 4 plus and urine ketone bodies negative. And again on lipid profile, his total cholesterol was 103, triglycerides 111, HDL was quite low, 21 mg per deciliter, LDL was 70 mg, non-HDL 82 mg per deciliter, and even apolipoprotein A1 was 86, it was actually normal, apolipoprotein B60, and then high sensitivity CRP less than 0 0.050. And lipoprotein little a was 30.46, just marginally raised. And his uh, glycemic parameters, fasting plasma glucose was quite high, 339 mg per deciliter, postprandial plasma glucose, 557 mg per deciliter, HbA1c was 13.8%. And uh, renal parameters, blood urea 19.3 mg per deciliter, serum creatinine 0.52 mg per deciliter, LFT liver function tests were normal, uric acid 3.4 mg per deciliter and serum electrolyte sodium was 136, potassium 4.79, little bit high on the higher side, chloride 101 milli equivalents per liter. And his thyroid profile was normal, of course TSH was 1.18 and even free T4 was normal. So actually, because he had very high blood sugar with HbA1c 13.8%, initially uh, there was no choice but to start on insulin. Uh, the diet advice was given because this, is a, this was actually in the lockdown period. In the lockdown period, he was in the house studying for his 10th standard and uh, his mother used to give a lot of fruit juices and then uh, soft drinks like that. So probably he was taking high glycemic food and... Uh, uh, he was given proper advice regarding uh, the diet and then he was advised to go for walking and also playing outside because he was totally inside the house during the lockdown period. And this advice was given and then we put him on basal bolus therapy with just injection uh, insulin as part, four units, uh, three times daily and Degludac 12 units in the night. And with this... Uh, insulin basal bolus therapy of course we monitored uh, his uh, blood glucose with the ambulatory glucose profile and you can see the initial on the first day the time in range was just one percent and time above range was almost 99 percent of course uh, we cannot see it properly on this screen and then as uh, the therapy, insulin therapy, diet and uh, the physical activity improved, his time in rate started increasing and on the seventh, fourth day, it was almost 72% time in range and time above range was 28% and time below was just 0%. And then subsequently, of course, in, he had some peaks and as the day progressed and he was taking regular insulin, so we could see on almost the uh, I think it was 12th or 13th day, we could not see any uh, 
time in range was very good about 67% and then on the last day on the 14th day it was almost 89% time in range and time above range was just 11% and of course some 2 to 3% time below range also so at this level so we considered a differential diagnosis of type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes modi and uh, lady because uh, it's a young diabetes uh, uh, lady so at this uh, stage i want comments from the panelists and uh, uh, other audience also uh, dr alok let us yeah dr alok can you start from from you yeah yes a 15 year child without ketosis hyperosmolar 339 557 blood glucose but still not having ketosis his c peptide has to be evaluated yes primarily yes. Yes. to diagnose whether it is type 1 or type 2 yes yes in our routine day to day practice c peptide is being done everywhere in the country now yeah if funds permit his antibody gad and ia2 should be investigated also since he is very thin built and uh, muscular mass is less so this will not fit into lady category because uh, lada is basic cut off is 25 years above so we will not think on this and to establish lady or lada we have to see the antibody markers mm -hmm. without that we cannot discuss that thing regarding modi there was no information about three generation yeah it's diabetes and there was no genetic studies in this without that we can't say modi so our point is this is a non ketotic type 1 diabetes it may be which is very less percentage or it is a type 2 diabetes with little after the antibody markers are present it can be a double diabetes yeah where type 2 diabetes is presenting diabetes for a type 1 diabetes is underlying diabetes and a, this a, a series will be followed and after some years or after doing these two things gad ia2 antibodies and c peptide we can clinch the diagnosis but treatment has to be insulin because insulin is giving very good result we need not start any oral drugs for this even if the blood sugar is there and uh, other things are not tested insulin as prescribed is the drug of choice and it is bringing time in range to a very uh, very good range of even up to 89% so treatment let us continue the treatment go for a uh, pancreatic ultrasound see if there is any fcpd fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes is they are resistant they have high blood sugar and there is no ketosis so malnutrition related diabetes mellitus which is rare now in our country but that can be one of the Uh, differential diagnosis also, but in that, Sir, I, yes, yeah, madam, madam Vashu. There are some crucial questions in the history that I wanted to find out. Uh, Doctor Anil Kumar, what was the degree of weight loss this child had experienced? Uh, weight loss what was, was more the duration of symptoms. Weight loss was more than ten kgs. And what was the duration of his polyuria and polydipsia? Duration of symptoms was about for uh, maybe fifteen days. right and uh, this uh, you mentioned the father had diabetes what is the father's bmi this boy's bmi is uh, on this the boy's side. bmi is about 17 15. this, this boy's bmi you mentioned was 15 what was the father's bmi father's bmi was 24.2 so the father was also not obese yeah yeah and yeah, as dr obese. alok Other said this is not three generations uh about 7 uh, years back sir he is now 47 years so no, he developed diabetes when he was 33 when he was he developed diabetes when he was 33 40 years what he is now 47 years. so 7 years ago is 40 7 years before so 40 years old 
so what dr looks and very uh, crucial i think observation that he's made which fits in with the history is that insulin requirement is an absolute must the sugars are very high the weight loss is very significant the weight loss being significant itself points to an insulin requiring condition and i suspect sir what you are saying about the ketones being negative also ties up with the fact that the triglycerides are normal usually when there's hyperglycemia triglycerides tend to rise up quite sharply so if there's a short history the parents were sensitized to diabetes because there is there is diabetes in the family so they are aware of uh, the the possibility the diagnosis they would have picked up early but he's managed to lose 10 kilos in the space of two or three weeks uh ketones may just be a matter of chance because we are now seeing with more sensitization and with more awareness that we often pick up children before the ketosis develops and common things being common i would put my money on type 1 diabetes because this is the the age is right the symptoms are right the only thing which doesn't quite fit in is the absence of urinary ketones or ketosis in general which can happen because the diagnosis is picked up in time and the very severe weight loss would again point to insulin requirement so i think it was very good that they started on insulin um because this was picked up early and even ketones have not developed i suspect that's why the response was so beautiful he uh, uh, is able to mount some sort of uh, ability to respond because his own insulin would still be formed it's not down to 5% so it's he responds beautiful but and sir data nil data nil i was just data nil i was just ask one yeah. question so whether you told that the patient was in the lockdown any history or any suspicion of the covid Some, no, no. any uh, there was no symptoms of covid and of course uh, uh, he was uh, the test was done he was covid negative okay. there was no symptoms of covid during that time also and so you were saying something with the with the yeah. blood sugar so high fasting 339 <laughs> and uh, post prandial 500 and above still can we expect uh, absence of ketones in the urine in type 1 diabetes Oh, absolutely. Yes, I mean, yes. because you have picked up yes. early. The you possibility is that there are still beta cells is not completely destructed. It is not showing that right. complete destruction. Mm-hmm. Patient is having insulin or panic symptom, but that does not mean the patient will develop DK only because you are picking up at right time. That may be the possibility, and that's the reason. Uh, long back, if you remember, Doctor Anil Kumar, we have created a national awareness program. to pick the child early type for diabetes and you know those with bad weighting and there's going for multiple times uh, in urination they all should be asked for their sugar to be checked in the pediatrician as well as in school going program and if you see in the western world in germany in all these places they want to pick the all the children they should be picked up as It's early as possible i mean to develop a diabetic ketoacidosis it means if they have a history of one month or 15 days or 30 days or 40 days then you know there will be inquiry why someone had not picked up this child for type 1 why this child is been admitted for diabetes ketoacidosis so a dk admission in hospital or in icu and pediatric icu uh, will have a lot of auditing work will be there why this child is not picked up in type 1 because I, otherwise a child going for dk is it's a life threatening situation yeah. even it may be very less but it still is a life threatening situation and in india there are many child who are dying because of dk because they are not treated properly course, everyone will not many, go to anil kumar uh, many rural children may i ask one rural. question yes pratap yeah so if we are telling that the patient is not having absolute insulin deficiency some beta cells are functioning then if we do c peptide and it comes normal it will not give you any idea whether the patient so, is pratap, any type actually, one or type 2 if you go for the modi score there is a modi score that scoring system is suspicion is that if a young child where insulinopenic i mean without considering anything you have to treat it like type 1 diabetes number one second is suppose after 5 years of the treatment you find that child is uh, 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 still having a good amount of c peptide level after 5 years that's what modi score is saying 
then you should suspect. Or the third condition is there are three generations where you get less than 25 years of age. So I mean, <laughs> his father of a 40 years is a typical type. Two. So forget he's not born. <laughs> Either you have a first cousin or his mama or masi or someone who had developed the 22 and other is 26 and someone is 19 and someone is 16 and they are misdiagnosed as type 1. You call them. You get their C peptide. If you find them after the five years of type 1 diabetes, they were doing that he is type 2 or assume is Modi. It will not going to make any, you are not done anything wrong for the patient. Still, you are treating the patient with insulin, which is the most safe thing to be done for this child. But suppose if you are misdiagnosed someone, not as a type 1 and treating as a Modi, as a, uh, with <laughs> their self-corner, that means you are doing something criminal, which is, it can be a dangerous situation. Sometimes you may go in a life threatening situation. So the my point is this patient, there should not be a consideration of differential diagnosis in this patient. If you are not thinking of like MRDM, what Dr. Allah Kornega is saying that is someone who is ketosis, not prone, developing like a type 1, a very lean and thin child, developing MRDM or FCPD. Otherwise, for MRDM and FCPD, treatment is insulin only. You can't give them anything other than this. And you should treat this as a type 1. Unless you have very, very strong body score in this particular patient or in the family. So can I just add a little historical vignette to this? Uh, 1999, there was a paper from Italy where for two years they had in one district of Parma absolutely inundated the whole district with posters and education and school jaja ke and a lot of very aggressive awareness campaign for two years. Then for six months, they studied Parma versus a nearby district in Italy. Same country, very similar geography, same socioeconomic status. And they found that they had no DKA in Parma, whereas the neighboring district had the usual number of DKAs. And they found that the A1Cs were lower, the hospitalization was four or five days as opposed to 15 days. So what Dr. Panchi is saying today, people start getting upset when somebody appears in DKA had been proved by them way back. After eight years, they published another study saying that even though we stopped that aggressive campaign, the effects of it lasted. And so eight years later, they found that they had hardly any decays in this district, whereas in the rest of Italy and in the rest of the world, the number of decays were about 30 to 40 percent at presentation. So uh, this would be uh, type one who has had a somewhat acute onset. We've picked him up in time. And that would also then explain a somewhat longer honeymoon. What has happened is very beautiful. With CGMS today, we get really nice diet control in the beginning days. So the benefit of that, as showed by GCPT, as showed by EDEC, and now as shown by our own experience and a couple of papers which have come in the last uh, year or so, that the honeymoon lasts much longer. Because you, whatever beta cells you had, you conserved them. As Dr. Banshi Sabu said, as Dr. Alok Kanungo said, Dena to insulin hai. you started insulin, you gave it nicely, you're supported with TGMS from the first day, you can get tight control from the beginning, and you get beautiful outcomes because the beta cells get supported rather than destroyed, and you have a very nice outcome. And this is not just outcome good now, but even 10 or 20 or 30 years down the line, the number of uh, chronic complications will be much less. So much less acute complications, much less chronic complications. Thank you. I think we can Dr. Let us proceed. Yeah. Let us proceed. What happened? Letter. Okay. Of course, I think we have all discussed about uh, diff, uh, the uh, the regarding. Sir, can the, I just uh, add? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can I just add a little line about C peptide since this was raised? I think. is in response to, it is the same amount as insulin being secreted. And therefore, C-peptide or insulin secretion has to be seen in the context of the blood sugar. So whenever we take a sample for C-peptide, we must have a simultaneous blood sugar in the same sample. And so if you have a sugar of 339 with a C-peptide of 1.8 or whatever, then it is normal by definition, but not in relationship to the 339. At 339, a normal pancreas should have been making huge amounts of C peptide or insulin, and therefore it is inappropriately low. So you would come to the same conclusion, even though the level looks normal by the definition of the lab, 
for the child, the C peptide is low. Yes, okay. sorry, sir. Okay. Sorry okay. to interrupt. Of course. The next, just I want to show this algorithm of how we will approach to diabetes in young. Of course, the first and foremost thing in this is the family history. If the family history is positive, and again, if it is positive in three generations, and as we discussed, ketonuria negative and normal C-peptide, and response you to, of course, some uh, Modi respond to, uh, to sulfur, sulfonylurea, as you can think of monogenic diabetes and then subject from subject them for genetic analysis. And again, if the family history is positive, not in three generations, only in father or mother and ketonuria negative and C-peptide actually more or normal and response you to OHAs, then we have to think of young onset or early onset type 2 diabetes. And then if the family history is negative and the ketonuria positive, then definitely we have to do C-peptide, which will be very low or absent, then type 1 diabetes is the absolute diagnosis. And on doing antibodies, if it is positive, it is autoimmune type 1 diabetes negative, it is uh, idiopathic type 1 diabetes. And again, if the C-peptide and uh, C-peptide is poor and an abdominal x-ray or uh, uh, a CT scan of the abdomen, if you get calculi, which will be pancreatic calculi, we can think of FCPD. I think this is a very good algorithm for diabetes in young that uh, most of our young diabetologists can follow while treating diabetes in young. I thought uh, uh, to just share this. And then now the in uh, the C-peptide and antibodies of this patient, actually fasting C-peptide was done initially, as Madam said, it was 1.81 nanograms per ml. And even fasting insulin was done, it was 11 was before giving insulin, not after, before giving insulin. And the GAD antibody was negative, 2.32. Of course, if it is more than 10, we take it as uh, positive. So now, as uh, Madam said, fasting C-peptide was done when the blood sugar was high, 330, <laughs> fasting 500. So definitely those uh, lower levels. And that is because of glucotoxicity. Because of glucotoxicity, de definitely there will be suppression of beta cell. We'll get 1.81. In spite of uh, this one, it looks normal. 1.81 is quite normal. Uh, C-peptide so, uh, for this so, patient. Uh, so I'm going to interrupt you here, sir, a little bit. Because I would not invoke glucotoxicity here. Uh, uh, please keep in mind that this child has lost 10 kilos of weight. His A1C is 13.8. So he is insulinopenic. Not insulinopenic enough to get ketosis, but definitely insulinopenic. So the history itself, I don't even need a C-peptide. The history is telling me very clearly this child is running very low on insulin and the uh, as I said, the C peptide of 1.8 or the fasting insulin of 11.6 is inappropriately low for the blood sugar of 339. And I would put it to you, sir, that if it, see, common things are common. And if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it's likely to be a duck. This I would not even waste my money on C peptide, quite honestly, or on GAD antibodies. Because the other problem is we know from way back in, uh, in Dr. Nehra's study, Dr. Nehra's studies and uh, Dr. Hipatia studies, and now even recently, a couple of papers which have shown that about one third or one quarter of T1Ds in India are antibody negative. So as a pediatric endocrinologist and knowing how short money is in this country, I would put my money on CPMS and say, if you've got a limited amount of money, you spend two and a half, three thousand on antibodies, whereas the clinical presentation is very much like type 1 diabetes. Let me spend that money on buying five sensors and, you know, spend that money on seeing where my sugars are. That you did an excellent job. You put the child on the sensor. You could see how quickly he responded. He was making enough insulin to manage. So he, he was very insulin sensitive initially also. You immediately, as soon as you corrected his lifestyle, his insulin requirements came down, his insulin resistance improved. So the CGM has guided us. And what we request these days, uh, there's been so much data in the last three or four years about how valuable CGMS is that as soon as you 
have an A1C of 13.8, you've got a boy who's in the right age, just tell them, please go and buy the sensor. I'm going to put it for you. You have to be on CGMS now continuously, not just for the one day or uh, one week or two weeks, but on CGMS all the time. And you get beautiful type 1 diabetes control. You get very good beta cell uh, protection. The destruction rate goes down because now the body is not so stressed out. You have very nicely reduced the insulin resistance with the life changes. Juices band kar diya. Rubbish band kar diya. Chips and chocolates band kar diya. And the child is now exercising. The stress levels are less because he's able to get out of the house a little bit so that COVID fear has gone down a little bit. And as his insulin sensitivity improves with external measures as well as the blood sugar being normalized, he will respond very beautifully, which I think is what your child did. Okay. 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 I could not understand why insulin level is being done when patient was already on insulin. No, no, sir. It was done before, before starting him on insulin. Before starting him in insulin. The so actually, it alone is sufficient for this. Sufficient. Normally, no. insulin level is not required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So ideally, my yeah. question is ideally, C peptide should be done immediately or first you have to control blood sugars with the more, more, but better is that yes. because if you are yes. controlling it, then spuriously yes. low will not be there. There will not be any glucotoxicity. Will be responsible. You won't even think but of glucotoxicity. Sometimes when we do with random glucose slightly higher, it is like a stimulated C peptide because already stimulation is there. But long standing diabetes with the uncontrolled sugar will give you a lot of glucotoxicity and there will be spuriously low C peptide. And actually, madam, the C peptide and GAD antibodies are done at a subsidized rate in our it's institute. Fine. So probably we are not we are not burdening the but patient sir, also with no, but sir, in your case, because you got a government hospital and you're getting subsidies, all right. But you see, the average person mm -hmm. who's treating someone with diabetes uh is yeah. not going to get a subsidy. That's a, that's so the message should be very clear. That we don't yeah. really need GAD antibodies, they charge almost up to six thousand rupees. Dr. Alok, any anything you want to add here? Dr. Alok? I I think uh, C peptides should be done. Not only GAD, but IA2 must be done. GAD is an antibody which looks at the it is like tiger is looking at you, but IA2 is tiger is running towards you to eat you. So, if the IA2 is positive, then within six months, beta cell failure is absolutely definite. So, IA2 must be, tyrosine pyrophosphate must be done. It is a research case. This is not a general uh, routine yeah, management. Yes, In sir. This Excellent. So, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. One second. I'm saying research and so the signal should, the messages should be very clear. Research versus general practice. That is, uh, so listen, this case should be referred to a hospital where such work is being done. General practitioner should not keep this case. It should be referred to endocrinologist or institute. Dr. Anil Kumar is a senior specialist and working in a hospital only, sir. I mean, he yes. is practicing that. That is what. That's why, that's oh, why no. he is presenting a case. That's why he is This is a very a interesting case. case. Yes. This, this is a very interesting case. Initially, there is no evidence of type 1 diabetes, but treatment should be like type 1 diabetes, and there should be revision of diagnosis at every year level. Yes. So that okay. as so the case can go develop, ahead. Yeah, yeah. That was a go very, ahead, very, very go good ahead. point. Very good point yeah. raised by Dr. Yeah, Alok. I think we, we will by go Dr. Alok. So, uh, Dr. Anil, let us move. Yeah, uh, as uh, Dr. Alok sir said, we have taken it as a research case and we have investigated. And of course, we have repeated the C peptide levels also. It is for our knowledge and also for the research purpose. And then here, actually, it was uh, about one, one month afterwards. As we saw that if FPG was 92 and PPG is 119. And again, we repeated C peptide for our interest. Fasting C peptide was 4.75 and stimulated C peptide was 5.08. So from 1.8, definitely there was an increase. And this time the glycemic control was perfect. There was no glucohyperglycemia. Uh, 
So again, so what happened next? But no, so you hypoglycemia, sir, at this point, because Hello. coming down within one or two months from thirteen point eight to six point one. No, yes, no, not point one, madam. We are not done. HP and systems. It was after. Uh, I think it was six months. After uh, three or four months, we have done. This is just four six. It is just one month, one one and a half months. So you can go ahead, go ahead with the case. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. This patient is improving. This patient yeah. is improving, and his yeah, yeah. CPI is improving. Yeah, yeah, we have to wait and watch. What? So where it is going? actually here we discussed with the patient uh, parents both father and mother and then we told them maybe a genetic analysis is necessary and they were ready to go because his father is a dentist so he was very keen on to know whether it is type 1 or type 2 and he wants to save his uh, child so immediately agreed for genetic analysis and of course we received the analysis after about one month and the i think the results you might have seen in your uh, uh, whatsapp messages it is glis3 gene exon4 and i think exon4 variant it's a heterozygous zygosity uh, it it was heterozygous actually homozygous gis3 leads to neonatal diabetes and congenital hypothyroidism and it was autosomal recessive this was the result by the genetic analysis report and after this uh, of course they have done all modi panel neonatal gene panel i think uh, this is available in the end what are the genes they have looked at they have looked at all these genes so this this was the one which was positive glis glis3 gene so and uh, uh, we went through the literature and we could see the uh, importance of glis3 the transcription factor glis3 with critical roles in thyroid hormone biosynthesis hypothyroidism and pancreatic beta cells and diabetes here glis3 is a member of gls sub family of krupal like factor transcription factor that functions as an activation of the islet cell and study of glis3 deficiency in mice and humans revealed that this gene plays a critical role in the regulation of several biological processes and implicated in the development of various diseases like hypothyroidism and diabetes and this was supported by several genome wide association studies that identified significant associations of common variants in glis3 with increased risk of these pathologies that is both uh, Uh, neonatal diabetes and hypothyroidism and then just to to the next uh, important this one again this mutations of glis3 can lead to neonatal diabetes syndrome like neonatal diabetes congenital hypothyroidism and polycystic kidney and actually glis3 and neonatal diabetes syndrome several workers have reported in 2003 in a saudi arabian family they have reported this uh, permanent neonatal diabetes congenital hypothyroidism polycystic kidney iugr facial anomalies congenital glaucoma and hepatic fibrosis actually these three, three children died at 10 days 6 months of life and 16 months of life and again one more in 2006 in one more study they have reported a homozygous insertion of this glis3 gene but their neonatal diabetes syndrome was there not associated with any other like uh, hypothyroidism and polycystic kidneys and this uh, child actually lived up to the adulthood and then again Uh, there were some uh, workers who found that these uh, glis3 gene mutations can be associated with along with uh, neonatal diabetes hypothyroidism polycystic kidneys craniosynostosis hiatus hernia asd splenic cyst coronal atresia sensory neural deafness exocrine pancreatic insufficiency and also other facial defects like bilateral low set ears depressed nasal bridge elongated and up sl uh, slanted palpebral fissures this is uh, actually one case they have reported with the heterozygous mutations he also presented with the neonatal diabetes uh, and he didn't had any renal cysts and hypothyroidism he also lived up to adulthood and they also found out shall i finish this to this one hello 
Yes. GLR1 3 yes. associated okay. with type 1 diabetes also. They have found that uh, the association of GLI3 variant, this uh, 7020673, along with type 1 diabetes in European populations and other populations they have not seen in Japan, this, this variant, they have seen some protective uh, mechanism for type 1 diabetes. And again, type 2 diabetes association, uh, several workers have seen the association of this GLIS3 in Dane population, Chinese and South Asians also. And in one of the studies, the GLIS3 variants were reported to be associated in type 2 diabetes in East Asians and also Chinese. And of course, uh, even with they wanted, they studied, they want to study whether it was, so there was an association with Modi. It was done in Russian population and they could not demonstrate any association with Modi. So, so given the clinical presentation, sir, the absence of all these features that you've so nicely elucidated and the review of literature that you've done, this child clearly does not have any of those problems and clearly he has type 1 diabetes. So he should be treated as type 1 diabetes. It's a uh, he, he, he's hetero uh, genus for it. He's not uh, he's not homozygous, but it's sorry. <laughs> My English is going for a toss. He's heterozygous for it, not homozygous, and he has none of the clinical features. So we can reassure the parents that the significance of this is not uh, very clear. And this child is behaving like type 1 diabetes with a somewhat prolonged, nicely controlled uh, honeymoon phase, which is explaining the, the nice uh, C-peptide levels also now. And we simply have to put him on CGMS and continue with basal bolus. Uh, sometimes these children can go on for as long as six months to one and a half years with very low doses of insulin or perhaps just a single uh, uh, long-acting insulin because the honeymoon is so long. And that's very gratifying actually because then we know that their protection from chronic complications <coughs> in the decades to come is very good. Yes, sir. Madam, with Dr. Dr. Alok, do you agree with all this? Dr. Alok, your comment? Uh, I think... Uh, one gene we are living here that is TCF7 alpha gene, which if positive suggests it is type 2 diabetes. If negative, it is towards type 1 diabetes. A patient who presented with hyperglycemia of severe nature without ketosis and C peptide was not very low and treated adequately and controlled is not in honeymoon phase. Honeymoon phase starts three months after the treatment of established type 1 diabetes. And no, sir, no, sir. No, sir. Two, three weeks, it starts in a week, sir. What are you talking about? It starts in a week and it can be very long. Three I, think, months. I think let Dr. Anil Kumar complete his case but, first. Hi, but, that would be best. Just, that would be best. Just, I want to make uh, one or two comments here. Family history was positive and the C peptide was quite high. So, whether we can, after the, I think after uh, one, one and a half months, the C peptide fasting was also high, stimulated was also high. Can we still put it into type 1 diabetes? Because even yes. GLIS3 association was there both with type 1 and type 2. What is, his current, current what is his current situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah current that situation, is what he... of course. Uh, this is after, I think, uh, four months. His weight was 50 kgs, height 170 centimeters, BMI was 17, FPG was 101, PPG was 85, HPA1C 6.1%. Again, of course, we repeated the C peptide for the research purpose. Fasting C peptide was 5.61, stimulated was quite high, 17.76. Uh, with the so high C-peptide levels, uh, our uh, diagnosis was probably type 2 diabetes in Eng uh, was our diagnosis. Initially, we treated with insulin. So, honeymoon period may not last so long and uh, honeymoon period may not give for so high C-peptide levels as I know in type 1 diabetes. Well, I can Let show you papers, sir. I can show you my experience. It yeah. does. It can particularly these days when we've got good tight control and we are picking up much earlier. So there is not such severe incident opinion. Madam, such high C-peptide? 
is it possible whether the patient continued currently what is his situation yeah. is so, I, I, yeah, so I, I i would again ask you the same question i will finish i will finish uh, yes, on yes. 6 to 23 that is about 4 months after maybe i think this is about i think 8 months after 8 months afterwards weight was 124 cm uh, weight uh, sorry height was 174 cm weight 56 kg bmi 18.49 fpg 95 ppg 120 hb1c 5.7 fasting c peptide 3.7 stimulated was 9.21 of course it has reduced but i feel it's not at the type 1 level it's, it was definitely very high and then now at present his height is 174 weight is 58 bmi 19.2 fpg 95 ppg 134 this is 2 3 days back what is his a1c sir uh, a1c was 6. Point, uh, Uh, 5.7 no. no, so, was in February. What is it now? February. Now we have not done uh, because uh, the boy didn't come. It was done in the house uh, with glucometer. Maybe after some time we will do. Actually, after this one, so after initially I think one one and a half months, we tapered the insulin, reduced the dosage, and finally the insulin was stopped. It was only on lifestyle measures and regular uh, diet and walking. I think probably since almost. Uh, Eight to nine months is on lifestyle measures only. So no metformin. Uh, no metformin. Metformin also not being given. Metformin doesn't make sense, sir. With that, uh, with that BMI, metformin won't make much sense. The father's also not to be. Yeah, yeah. BMI not was at a type two. two. The, the, we are not looking at a, B, a type two sort of uh, presentation. There's no in evidence of insulin resistance. So yes, we we would metformin doesn't make much sense. This is type two in young. Let us wait and see whether he is going to Lada or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had shared some uh, C C G M S uh, slides with uh, with Doctor uh, Pratap uh, yesterday. I saw this girl who, for the last two years, in fact, they had come to me saying, "Where should we get the stem uh, cell therapy?" And I said, "पहले आप diabetes को तो control करो. There is no such thing as stem cell therapy." And uh, they were showing me very nice HbA1c, two years of diabetes, and the moment you put her on CGMS, uh, if Dr. Pratap can possibly share those, it will be very nice. Her sugars are going from sixty to five hundred, sixty to four hundred. So her A1c is nice, but she is running hyperglycemia. It is causing organ damage, and she will possibly discover this if she is left to herself. uh within 5 or 10 years of renal and eye damage so we really have to keep in mind that diabetes in the young needs cgms needs very constant sugar monitoring occasional sugar testing does not help it doesn't capture the highs and the lows dcct and edic showed us something which we are understanding now which is that more than the a1c the glycemic variability is the crucial thing so if the sugars are going up and down you're getting kidney damage you're getting eye damage if you have high glycemic variability you're getting tissue damage so what you really need to do is make sure that the glycemic variability is controlled no matter what if it's just with lifestyle wonderful but you will find with cgms that they will get the occasional highs which are pretty high which are causing kidney uh, tissue damage and uh, th this will not show up in the next few years अनिल कुमार जॉब दीटेड विथ इंसुलिन एंड कंटिन्यूड इट टील इंसुलिन वॉज नॉट रिक्वाड he is doing the right path he has to for research purpose a tcf7 alpha gene can be tested if possible otherwise things have been done hla marker can be seen so that in which uh, whether it is a type 1 or not there are other uh, markers also there ia2 must be done in this case and uh, treatment is uh, perfectly all right child is improving 
there is no complication no ketosis nothing and the food and everything is good weight gain is there so there is nothing wrong diagnosis may be anything treatment is going on proper method our friends who are also in the periphery they can manage the patients like this and with insulin to start with with the glucometer also they can see where the three times four times if they test they can know the variability least, they can least, continue at least six sugars a day at least six sugars a day sir yes and if cgms is available and uh, some companies are giving free also so something can be done but nothing to worry if such a case comes to you give insulin monitor manage and continue thank you yes, i, I would add that from, i just yes. take one one second sir i'll just take a second yeah, to say yeah, yeah. that from kia from dr anand kumar's uh, hospital institution there's a very nice study just published by dr santosh leti where he has shown that even intermittent use if you can't afford cgms all the time if you can do intermittent use of cgms every 3 months or so that also is very revealing mm. and as dr alok said you need to do about six sugars a day to make sure that the highs and the lows are getting captured that the glycemic uh, variability is getting captured back to you sir okay uh, dr anil please yeah. go for the second Me. case This is second case it's a quite short case and of course it's quite interesting it's about few years back Uh, Nil Kumar, my only question was that why his father's sugar is not controlled. He is having eight point two. Sir, actually, that's very actually, bad, you know. Once he becomes he is seven dentist, years of diabetes and that sugar is not getting good control. Because sir, he is he, dentist and doctors are very good at sugar control. That is no, what we know. <laughs> he came to me only one and a half months back after treating his son so he came to me and of course we have started multiple uh, uh, combination of drugs now i am asking to go for insulin he is not ready to go for insulin you put him on cgm <laughs> yeah 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 so this next case actually 20 years boy i uh, i saw him about maybe i think uh, uh, about 9 to 10 years back His BMI was nineteen point four nine, weight sixty one point two kgs, height one seventy seven point two centimeters, waist circumference seventy one centimeters, BP one twenty by eighty millimeters. Family history was positive, and of course, the FPG was two thirty three mg per deciliter. PPG was three twenty nine mg per deciliter. HP one C sixteen point five percent. Again, very high HP one C. He was on premix insulin. Thirty seventy ten units in the morning and eight units in the night. He came to me with this uh, insulin, this one. And when we did the blood sugar in our institute, his FPG is one one eight, PPG was two eighty five. Of course, we have to do fast uh, C peptide levels because, uh, as I said, it's available at a subsidized rates. Again, fasting C peptide one point zero four, stimulated C peptide two point four one. So this actually. Uh, initially i thought it is a type 1 diabetes but when i saw the fasting and simulated c peptide so thought probably it could be type 2 or even we have to think of modi also because the c peptide was not quite high and gat antibodies was negative and of course vitamin d was less and serum creatinine was normal and at this stage actually we went in deep into his history when we asked his family history father had diabetes and father's mother had diabetes he had no signs of insulin resistance at this stage definitely i thought we have to do genetic analysis probably modi gene panel and he was sent to our uh, dr mohan's diabetic center at chennai and of course uh, they do they were doing it free during that time we were sent there and uh, luckily we got the result in about one one and a half months it was abcc8 gene heterozygous mutation it was modi 12 and again this is this was responsive to sulfonylureas so we tapered the insulin and then we had to uh, stop insulin and start glimipride 0.5 mg with 0.5 mg we could get the hb <laughs> It was six point four percent. He continued it, and probably after I think uh, uh, six months to one year, he was lost for follow up. So uh, uh, I don't know. He didn't return to our institute. But uh, the main what uh, the message from this uh, uh, case was: it, sometimes we think that it could be type one diabetes, but such cases, if we take proper history and then 
if it turns out to be Modi, definitely it's very good for the patient and we can control with very low dose sulfonylureas. So that happens in some of our cases because Modi is definitely very less in practice, one to two percent. But if we detect it is very good for the patient. Very I think nice. this is an excellent case, yeah. Very nice case. Yes. Yes. Any any comments, sir? No, uh, very nice. Dr. Alok. Dr. Alok. Ah, this is very well done. Very. This is uh, where our friends should know that clinical suspicion in a middle in a mid in a case where you are not able to diagnose, clinical suspicion helps to prove something. And you suspected that it can be Modi. And you sent him to the right place. So that suspicion is important without trying multiple drugs, different doses of insulin and the frequent hypo and hyperglycemia. It is better to keep your eyes and ear open and think about the case. Take help whenever is needed. Talk to your colleagues and decide. That is for the best benefit of the patient. Madam, Madam, you, Kumar has done very yeah. rightly, you know, you should have always a high index of suspicion and don't get biased with the previous diagnosis. The previous, maybe your teacher or maybe a professor or maybe a senior person, but whatever, he may also do the mistake. If patient had come to you, I mean, the take home message is always see the patient from the history day one. What was the diagnosis? How it was diagnosed? What was the symptom? Whether the right investigation was done or not? what was left out, what could be the other possibilities. Think of it. It is like always in internal medicine, a patient, somebody might have diagnosed a tuberculosis and it turned out to be a malignancy, turned out to be the sarcoidosis. And this is only because of high index of suspicion. Well, second physician, the second consultant should always see the patient that you are seeing the patient first time. Don't get biased with whatever the investigation or whatever that somebody has diagnosed the patient. So that's a very important thing. And I think that should be a take-home message for every listener who is attending this CME. And, and you know, the thing, who is doing a lot of activities on our CME platform and we see every day the some or other case which keeps on coming on our WhatsApp group. And you know, every time it's very interesting. The doctor is suspecting something and then he's finding something unusual which may not be there. If you just get biased that you know somebody has diagnosed this and you have to continue with the same diagnosis. That's not right. It's a nice, right? Can I ask one question. So, when yes. would you suspect body, particularly in type 1 diabetes, is there any relationship with insulin requirement that if the requirement is less, you should no, suspect that, like more? I have one patient, a, a medical student only. She was uh, uh, treated <laughs> by a very senior person as a type 1 only, but naturally anyone who is diagnosed in the young age has been done. But in a clinical history, what we found that patient, actually, she is not taking regularly her insulin also. So our uncontrolled diabetes, then I found then I found that even she had not taken sometime even for days, not taken the insulin regularly. Even the premix of the basal insulin, she was not taking regularly. Then I suspected that this is not type 1. If someone is diabetes diagnosed more than 5 years is a type 1, never gone for DK, not for the time of diagnosis. Never in between. She was never regular. Her sugar is always uncontrolled. She never measured it. And then we suspected that, okay, this could be. And then we have done all antibody. We sent the patient for, again, for Modi genetic profile and then found. And simultaneously, her mama, the mother, the Masi, and, you know, the, the Masi daughter, the five persons in the family, everyone was having the diabetes diagnosed before the age of 30, 25, 22. And this medical student, she had come to me in internship. So this is like, you know, a high index of suspicion and sometimes you get that complete families actually are running the Modi. They all were misdiagnosed as a type 1 diabetes. So this may happen. So really the high family, the strong family history, the very low insulin requirement. Yeah. And absence so of insulin. And that's why the period of five years is so important. And there is a Modi score also, Pratap. You can calculate that, you know. You should have a high index of suspicion. If you just put on Modi score, you will find because the first two or three years, you can be very misleading. You can have, as I said, a prolonged uh, honeymoon phase. So if you've got a strong family history, not much requirement of insulin, not just in your index case, but in the rest of the family also, they're not getting into ketoacidosis, though they're irregular on insulin. 
and then it's worth getting the genetic test done i don't think we should be carrying home the message that every child needs a genetic test or every mm-hmm. child needs the pcr test but wherever you suspect kuch dal mein kala hai is when you should get these tests done excellent i think uh, dr jatwani who have covered excellently and the take home message from all the experts are quite clear so if you think then we can now stop and yeah, uh, already the one it's nine i o'clock. think i think yeah yeah i think uh, already lot has been covered about this the, the ultimate message is that type 1 uh, diabetes in young is always evolving so it may not be possible to diagnose exact type of diabetes at the first visit oh, or even during first year of diagnosis you have to treat them only with insulin unless and until you have got sufficient evidence to suggest that they are either having body or type 2 otherwise you treat them with insulin see if there is other positive features then subject them to genetic testing or something like that and unless and until strong evidence is that try to treat them with insulin and only in selected cases like this cases you will require for the treatment but otherwise you have to keep your eyes and ear open as dr alok kanungo said because if the patient is requiring less less insulin there is strong family positive history then you may suspect other types of diabetes but treatment should be with insulin only unless until you are finding other evidence to support uh, other diabetes that is what the take home message i will give and with very think, aggressive home monitoring of sugars yes yes madam and i think Dr. i Bansi, think i think the last last message you want to give to yes, us pratap has nicely summarized it thank you dr anil yeah. vilmani and alok kanungo your comments anil very very congratulations because you have nicely presented both the cases and nk singh nicely moderated and uh, thank you rss di and all executive committee members who joined srinivas and samang velu manoj chawla i could see some of them they joined it so it was very nice and i think we should continue this type of some case series in field of diabetes it's uncommon is always you know to listen but sometimes a common is also very important because i was surprised that father is having uncontrolled diabetes which is a common situation <laughs> we are trying to treat the uncommon very strongly and sometimes we are forgetting that common diabetes type 2 diabetes garden variety of type 2 diabetes keeping hcg of more than 8 8.5 that is also going to have a lot of complication so some message we should continue to tell our primary care physician that average hcg of our country is more than 8 let us try hard to achieve a tight glycemic control for most of our diabetes patients with this thank you once again thank you everyone. thank, thank you, you everyone thank you, thank you thank all you. the panelists yeah, thank you thank you thank you thank all. you and thank I you think all the delegates for joining yeah. dr nk singh dr anil kumar and pratap very nice i think a very good thank presentation you, dr anil kumar sir thank yeah, you doctor, for sharing thank you. these two nice cases yeah thank, thank you thank, thank you, you sir Thank, Thank you everyone Thank for you. sparing your valuable time. Thank you. Good night. Okay. We Good conclude. night. Good night. Good night. Conclude. Yeah. Leave. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.